think most people have painting completely backwards and it makes them stuck. And you can understand why and how to fix that as you watch this blank page come alive from nothing and in no time. The most valuable art skill that you could ever learn is to forget about logic and instead think smart, think like an artist. For this specific project, I knew not to draw anything, even though that might not appear logical. It might even seem crazy to some because of all the detail in the roots. And it's going to get weirder as I paint. We need technique and to know our stuff, to easily paint things that we love. And that's why you see me swatch my colors here. It's a rational and logical step for an artist to take early in a painting because we know a good contrast and harmony are important. As a result, I went with a few light and bright colors that fit the reference photo, as well as some darker ones because light tones, mid tones, and dark tones are essential in a painting. Now that's where most people get things wrong because how good is theory going to be if we don't know how to make these colors and what we already know work for us? A big painting secret is that technique isn't enough. You also need to learn how to approach a painting and what I'm sharing today is going to be one example of how to do that. At this stage, beginners are often already stuck in front of a blank page even though they know the basics and that's because as artists, we need to develop that ability to see a reference or a scene differently from other people. For example, to actually get started on this painting, to make it as quick and easy as possible, I know from practicing that painting a base layer on the entire sheet is going to be the best move here. And a photo is a good starting point for beginners to practice from. You can use a photo editing software and simply blur your reference out. I don't do it because I've trained myself to spot the main colors in the reference and scrap all details out of my mind. That's why I was able to cut my painting time by not drawing and just quickly blocking these colors in. After a while, you won't even need to overthink this step. It will become second nature. For a beginner, adding a base layer to an entire painting like this when there's a main subject like our tree might seem very weird. Why not just paint the background and then the tree after the drawing was completed so we actually know where to add each color? And we could do that, but the short answer is that it's going to take way longer. And besides with watercolor, we can take some shortcuts. Because if you are into watercolor painting like me, you probably know that it's better to start with light colors first. For example here, not only can I paint this space very quickly, but I know from practicing and not just executing a technique blindly that I can also make small mistakes as long as I keep those lighter parts light because they will be concealed with darker paints later. As a beginner, just remember that the goal at this point is to end up with a very broad picture of what it is you want to paint and that's all there is to it. For those who aren't used to approaching a painting with an artist's mind, it seems like the wrong way to do it because there's color everywhere now. This tree is a mess. I even realized some of my colors were in the wrong spot. But don't be fooled or don't panic if this ever happens to you because I'm going to show you what we can do. You'll see it's pretty powerful and pretty amazing to watch. But first, I'd like to introduce today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a supportive online learning community and whether you're looking for ways to up level in your career or explore a new skill, Skillshare has a class for you. Social media, productivity, illustration, fine art, and more. Skillshare has actually been a huge part of my own art journey and has really given me all the tools that I needed to start thinking like an artist. I learned watercolor painting there back in 2018 and it helped me grow my skills and confidence to the point that I decided to become a teacher a couple of years later. And fast forward to today, I have over 20 realistic painting classes and watercolor, watercolor pencils and oil pastels. And in relation to today's painting, I can teach you my approach to painting beginner magical forests. And if you need to practice the basics in depth first, I invite you to take my latest class on watercolor essential techniques for beginners. I can also highly recommend Yasmina Creates classes if you know absolutely nothing about watercolor painting. On Skillshare, after completing a class, members can choose to share their class project directly with the teacher and the community. And for me, the best is that we're able to give each other some feedback in a safe and encouraging way. 
Right now, the first 500 people to use the link in the description of the video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go ahead and join us and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And let's get back into the painting. Turning a painting mess into magic seems impossible if we're being logical, but that's not what we want to do. We want to think smart and it always starts by asking how we can paint so it's faster and easier for ourselves. That's why I'm singling out all the light parts by adding a dark color, burnt umber. That step is not the fastest part in the painting, unlike all others, but it's powerful and worth the effort because you quickly shape your tree out of nothing and create a high contrast at the same time. And I call that optimizing. I even did it here in this complex mushroom painting so you can see how useful this can be whenever there is a whole lot of annoying detail to paint. I bet now you can start seeing the point of thinking differently by just looking at this and there's more to come. I know not to use brown in its darkest and most opaque form just yet. Still painting from light to dark, but wait for the twist to that later and in the end. Another very important technique that I'm using here is to soften most of the harsh edges I've created with this brown paint. It's key to painting magic if realism if you style. It really helps tie the light and the dark parts together. I even leverage these wet areas in the paper to pull some brown paint and create some texture over to the light areas. Another way to optimize every painting step I take. I also use a red orange color to give the tree another flavor than it being mostly brown. This is a personal choice and again we see how much color matters in a painting too. And you can see how more and more this tree is coming into shape. And that's just the beginning still, since it's pretty lifeless at this point. Right now, this might remind you of the negative painting technique, and it is a bit similar because we're making an object pop by painting with dark colors all around. But you'll see that what I'm doing is a bit sneakier and also faster than that because I like to use plenty of my little tricks to turn nothing like this tree was a bit ago into a magical and realistic piece of art quickly. Now this is looking a bit boring and a bit out of balance color wise and I'm pretty sure I would get stuck right here pretty fast if I was to follow the rule to paint from light to dark to a T because it seems like I went a little too far too fast. But remember that practice makes better and you will learn to break art rules along the way and think like an artist more and more. Just ask yourself the right questions to move forward. For example, how do we get this tree to look better fast? We need to add some color, but can we do that now we've added our dark tone without it taking ages or ruining everything? That's where knowing your techniques makes it easy to find quick and effective ways to paint. For instance, with practice, we know that we can paint over more paint without disturbing it greatly as long as it was dry. That's one thing. We also know watercolors in particular are transparent and a dark or a light color can be added on top of another dark or light color. And if you add enough water to the new color so it's transparent, you get this cool effect of two colors merging together to make a new one, but in a very subtle, discreet way. And that's the difference with mixing wet colors together, and it's actually called the glazing technique. And imagine that this tree is in fact covered in moss, and even the dark areas are. The moss is just less visible there because it's further back. With my approach and glazing bright colors on top of dark ones, I'm easily getting the light parts to look colorful and vibrant, and we could foresee that. What's a lot more surprising, however, is that the brown parts look a lot better because now they also have this greenish tinge to it, except that it looks very discreet and natural since brown is quite dark to begin with. If I had approached this the logical way, light and bright colors first, then dark colors, slowly painting section after section, it would have been longer and harder, and with the dark and opaque colors added last as shadows, there wouldn't have been as beautiful as a transition between the very bright areas in the tree and the dark ones, and we would have totally missed out on the magic of the glazing technique. The painting is looking great, but what about all these little details that we've missed? It's all about playing with paint and techniques, again, to make them do what we want to do, except that this time we're going to leverage the opacity. With a mix of brown and neutral tint, it's a dark grayish color, I'm able to get an even darker brown color. Because I'm getting closer to finishing the painting, 
The mix is thicker than before, which means it will look more opaque, and that is why I know to use just a bit as an accent, to keep all the beautiful effects from before visible still. I'm adding this mix to the hollow areas of the tree, but I keep a light hand. The goal here is to increase realism a bit more by increasing contrast. That's why the tree's shape is looking better and better. I really love about this step that I can reshape absolutely any part of the tree because the paint is so opaque. It's what the negative painting technique does as well. But here, I use it for details and finishing the looks of the roots. I also take advantage of this mix to splatter on top of the roots. It adds some texture, and again, it helps tie contrasting parts of the painting together. White gouache or white watercolor are my go-tos when it comes to painting magic. They can be very opaque when mixed to a tad of water only, and even though I use them mostly for highlights, I also use them for creating something out of nothing. For example, I can create rocks, leaves, whatever you want to imagine, from just adding that bright opaque color to a very dark background and softening some edges to make it melt into that background better so it doesn't look like it's been added. Here, I can even add new baby roots anywhere I please. And because my white gouache is opaque but also transparent when you add water, it can look very natural, like it is part of the original painting. This specific demo here is a good example of how you paint magic from nothing by using smart thinking and bold use of the techniques you know to benefit your specific painting. I hope you enjoyed watching this magical tree come to life. I loved painting it and how it turned out, probably one of my favorite pieces this year. My family even said that this painting takes them back to the Lord of the Rings movie and I'd love to know if it reminds you of something special too, so let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to redeem your Skillshare free trial in the description of the video if you'd like to join me there and to learn another powerful and highly satisfying and magical way to paint realistic watercolors, you can watch this video here next. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time!